Overview. In this module, we will put everything that you have learned together and apply it to training a dog. Learning objectives. By the end of this module, students will 1. Explain NILIF. 2. Describe how to give verbal commands. 3. Differentiate between training a new command and training a known command. 4. Describe food lure addiction and how to prevent it. Learning activities. Required reading. Donaldson Chapter 6. Training guide and leadership handouts. Required assessments. Reading Quiz 12. Giving verbal commands. 1. If you give a command, you must follow through with the command. If you say sit, then the dog must sit. Otherwise, the dog learns that she doesn't ha always need to do a command she is given. 2. Do not repeat commands. Say sit only once. Wait 5 or so seconds, and if the dog doesn't respond, give a physical prompt and repeat the verbal. Otherwise, the dog learns that she doesn't need to respond to the first command you say. 3. Pay attention to your tone of voice. Don't give commands in a stern, angry tone. Use an upbeat tone of voice when training. 4. Vary the volume of your voice. Whisper a command sometimes. Occasionally, pretend the dog just ran into traffic and give the command. We want the dog to learn to respond to all different kinds of tones of voice. Consequences. Clicker training is a common method of dog training. A clicker is a small device that makes a clicking sound when pressed. This sound is paired with rewards such as foods and toys. Several times, the click becomes a condition reinforcer because the sound of the click predicts the delivery of something good for the dog, such as praise or food. Once conditioned, the clicker can be used to mark the behavior that we like. Clickers can become cumbersome, especially for individuals with mobility impairment. Instead of a clicker, we use yes to tell the dog she did something correctly. This statement is short and quick and said in a high-pitched tone of voice. Timing is extremely important. Deliver your yes immediately upon the appropriate response from your dog. For example, as soon as your dog's butt hits the ground for a sit, say yes. Although the yes must occur at the exact time the behavior occurs, the reward can be delayed. Many new trainers feel rushed to get the treat to the dog when you actually have several seconds to deliver the treat or other reward without deficits to the dog's learning. For this reason, it is unnecessary to have treats in your hand when giving commands. Keeping treats in your hand as you give commands leads, the treat, leads to treat or lure addiction slash dependency. This is when a dog learns to only respond to cues when you have a treat in your hand. Dogs learn very quickly that if a treat is visible, it is likely to get the treat if it responds, but if a treat is not visible, there is no reason to respond since he or she is unlikely to get a treat for doing so. Rewards delivered on an intermittent schedule produce stronger behavior than rewards that are delivered consistently. When a dog is first learning a new behavior, it is important that they are rewarded every time until they generalize the behavior to other settings and situations. See Donald's, Donaldson Chapter 6. However, once they know the behavior well, work toward giving a treat every so often as opposed to giving a treat after every correct response. Begin gradually fading out treats and other rewards by requiring a varying number of responses for each reward. Always follow correct behaviors with a yes. To prevent treat dependence, if you use a lure for a known command, do not deliver a treat on the, that trial. Only deliver a yes. Prompting levels. Prompting level, verbal. Description. Trainer gives the dog a verbal, com verbal command with no gestures, like sit. Prompting level, physical. Description. Trainer guides the dog with an empty hand, like moves the left hand from in front of the dog's face over their head and stops over their back. Prompting level, lure. Description. Trainer gives the dog a prompt with a treat in hand. While holding a treat, moves the left hand from in front of the dog's face over their head and stops over their back. Our goal for service dogs is that they perform a command being given the verbal prompt only. This is because responding to a verbal cue is the most difficult for a dog. If we have a client that cannot move their hands or arms, the service dog must be able to respond to verbal cues only. If we have a client that cannot speak, it is much easier to reteach the dog to respond to physical prompts than vice versa. In order to teach a dog to respond with only a verbal cue, we first must be able to get the dog into the correct position. We can do that using environment, environment props. For example, training near a wall so the dog cannot move away from us. Shaping. You learn about, learned about previously. Physical prompts and lure. Physical prompts and lures rely on the fact that you move the dog's head, its body will follow. So a physical prompt or lure for sit would involve moving the dog's head up in the back until its bottom touches the floor. Each different command has its own physical prompt or prompts. The lure simply means that there is a treat or toy in your hand. This helps the dog learn to follow your physical prompts. 
Prompting known commands. Sometimes a dog that should know a command does not perform the command after it's given verbally. In this situation, we use prompting to guide the dog to perform the command. 1. If the dog does not respond to a verbal command, then give the dog a physical prompt. If she doesn't respond after 3-5 to five seconds, give a lure. When the dog performs a command after a physical prompt or lure, say yes, but do not give the dog a treat. Unless performing on a physical prompt is an improvement for that command and dog. 2. Unless you are luring, see above. Don't have treats in your hands when giving the dog commands. This way, the dog learns that treats can, pe can appear out of anywhere, so she will perform commands even if she can't see treats in your hands, the treat bag, or a treat pouch. Put the treats elsewhere in the room. You have 10 seconds to get the treat to the dog after saying yes. Make sure that if you are giving a verbal prompt that you do not signal the dog with your hands or body language. For example, when saying stay, don't hold your hand in front of the dog, or when you say down, don't lean towards the dog. 4. Be patient. Don't start a physical prompt a second after you give the verbal prompt. Wait approximately 3 to 5 seconds. Training new commands. 1. For some commands, start with a lure. Guide the dog's body through the command, then yes, and treat. Repeat this several times. You may not be able to guide the dog through the whole command at first, so guide a quarter of the way or halfway, then yes, and treat. Keep adding more and more of the command across trials. A. As soon as possible, switch to a physical prompt in which you lead the dog through the command with an empty hand. B. Only start using the name of the command, verbal prompt, once the dog is reliably performing the command with a physical prompt. C. Over time, fade out the physical prompt. Lessen your movement so eventually you are only saying the command, verbal prompt, and not moving at all. 2. For other commands, you will shape the dog's behavior. You will not use a lure, but instead you will wait for the dog to engage with the item, whether it be entering the kennel or kennel or nosing a pen, forget it. Forget it, you would put a new item on the floor. Once the dog looks at the item or touches the item, yes, and treat. As the dog gets good at what you are asking him to do, they learn very quickly to repeat that just got them a treat. You will make it slightly more difficult to get a yes and treat. For example, for kennel, once the dog is reliably putting his head in the kennel, you will now wait until his head and shoulders enter the kennel before he gets a yes and treat. Or forget it, once the dog is reliably touching the item, you will wait until he touches the item with his teeth or opens his mouth around the item before you yes and treat. In this way, you are reinforcing successive behaviors, behaviors that are closer and closer to the final target behavior. A. Don't say the command until the dog can perform almost the entire command. B. Be patient. Shaping can take a while sometimes, but your patience will be rewarded. And C. Don't work on a new behavior for more than five minutes at a time. Cut this time in half for very young puppies. Fading out treat rewards. 1. The dogs need to be able to obey commands even with no food rewards are available. To do this, we must pair food rewards with other things like yes, petting, and praising. Another way is to use alternative rewards like toys, breaks, and playtime instead of treats. 2. Nothing in life is free. N-I-L-I-F. When working with a dog, think about all of the things in the environment that could serve as a reward and use these things to reward appropriate and good behavior. Like going outside, break or playtime, petting, water, sniffing grass and exploring, removal of cape, harness or leash, access to another dog or person, visual access to something of interest, usually another animal, toy, bone or fetch. Troubleshooting. Remember when what you have learned about dog health, reproductive cycles, perception, and communication. All of these factors can interfere with a dog's ability to learn and impact their behavior. Being empathetic and able to assess situations from the dog's perspective goes a long way to being a great dog owner and trainer. In addition, understanding how behavior is affected by consequences in general, as you have learned in this class, is imperative to understanding dog's learning and behavior. 1. If your dog isn't performing a well-known command correctly, go back to kindergarten. 
This means that you should add a prompt or alert to the next trial or go back a few steps in shaping. Two, if you use a treat pouch, don't use it all of the time. If you do, the dog will learn that she only gets a treat if you have the pouch on. We want the dog to think that treats can appear out of thin air and be delivered at any time. Three, if your dog stops responding or seems sluggish, switch to a different type of treat. Dogs can get tired of a particular kind of treat after a while. Switch to using access to a tennis ball for five to 10 seconds as a reward. Take a lap around the room to get the dog excited again.